All right, thank you for the videos. Um, so in terms of what you're feeling, I really like where your takeaway is. Um, I like what you guys are working on in the back arm. Obviously, we talked about it a little bit, how this back arm stays on top, how this right pec, right shoulder sort of works in jack swing. He's the opposite of any of this. So he's got none of this happening in his golf swing. So it's up, down, up feeling for him. It's very much this way. So when I look at Jack and read what he's talking about, you know, it seems to me like he wanted the golf club traveling, you know, down the baseline as square as possible. And so um, obviously from a takeaway perspective, if he's trying to keep it square, it's gonna have this sort of look to it going up. And then on the way through, it's gonna have a similar sense of really staying down this target line um, for a long period of time. Because, you know, obviously it's like, okay, so what makes, what would make this golf ball fly the straightest in terms of what this club face is doing? And, and so uh, if I'm gonna curve it, you know, I've gotta manipulate the arc one way or the other. So he's trying to eliminate as much curve as possible by having the club very square uh, to the baseline through the strike. So where you're at with your takeaway, I think is phenomenal. And what you're building with your right arm, um, I don't really mind the little bit of down because it looked like you're moving like an inch down and like an inch off the ball as you take it away. I don't necessarily mind that as much. Uh, I think that that would sort of clean itself up if, um, at the top of your backswing, there was a little bit more of the thoracic spine extending because it looks to me a little bit this way at the top versus sort of the you know leaning power uh, tower of Pisa kind of thing with more added that movement there. Um, I think if the upper thoracic got more loaded up it's like this left rib is stretching trying to go up this way as much as possible at the top but simultaneously there's also a feeling of while this is going from sort of rounded which keeps it this way because the upper spines rounded then up here everything starts to sort of lift up in this direction because of the leverage he's creating and so this right shoulder goes that way to create the leverage up here I think that would sort of level you out in terms of your head um, because when we mapped in the Tathata program Jack's um, body movements when we drew a line on his belt line and on his head at the top of his backswing his head was in the same spot but his belt line had dropped a few inches so He's loading his ribs up while he's simultaneously sort of really squatting in the legs. So it looks like he stays level in the pelvis and it looks like he stays level in the head, but the head and ribs went up this way while the legs were strong and engaged at the same time. So he's creating that sort of relationship of legs pushing down, ribs pulling up to create that leverage. Um, in terms of what he's doing at the top of his backswing. So um, I like the right palm feeling this way, feeling this way, feeling this way. There's a sense that it's not, it's not trying to be so dominantly on top because there's an opposing force happening in the left arm and the left wrist simultaneously. So it's like the right palm's pushing this way, but the left palm's planing at the same time. So the two, this one feeling this way and this one feeling this way is sort of what loads it up and kind of gets it less across the line looking in jack swing. So when you think of the front arm punch movement, you know, this left wrist is, it's not gonna stay down like this, obviously. It's gonna start to right about, right about here, it's gonna start to plane out a little bit so there's the feeling in more out of the three knuck or the three fingers in the left hand squeezing pushing up and away this way once they get past p3 so in more out it's uh you know the body's pivot is what gets the arms deep so for instance 
if I was just going to map it, I'm tracing the baseline, tracing the baseline, then the wrists are going to start to somewhat load right about here. But my body's pivot is what got my left arm deep and my hands covering my right bicep. Then from there, P3, pivot got me deep enough. Then from there, the arms are going to travel up which gets that left arm more on the shoulder plane. It's not gonna be deep at P3 and then keep turning around this way. Once I get my pivot to P3, my hands cover my right bicep, then the club goes up to the sky. And that's where the, the thoracic's extending while the arms are pushing away from P3 to P4 to get the club up and leveraged. Um, but then what happens is from here, if my hands are covering my right bicep at P3, well at P5, this left shoulder is going down and left. The hands are actually out of my right bicep or more in front of me at P5 than they were at P3. Because what I see in your golf swing is the club, in terms of your arm swing, the arm swing looks really good going up but it looks a little bit behind you coming down. And what I mean is, I know you don't want this to get too out and that might be your tendency, but um, if the club gets too underneath right here, it looks a touch behind you right here. And what that causes and what I see in your swing is, the club throws on you a little bit through the hit. And what I mean is when you look at your down the line picture, where this club exits, on the through swing is pretty low. It's kind of below your left shoulder. So what that means is the club was a little bit behind you here and then the arms traveled independently a little bit through here. Your lower body sort of stalls out while your arms sort of travel on their own and then your body kind of catches up late. And so what I'd like to see is the club getting, uh, because you've created the leverage in the right arm, it's, it's all set up to propel the arms faster down in front of you, which gets the body turning faster and gets this firing back in front. Because the only reason the right pec went up this way is to slam back down in Jack's swing. So that it's up, down, under, versus up, kind of behind, chase the arms, and then up again is a little bit of what I see in your swing. So what I'd like to look at is, if you're gonna create Jack's backswing, well then how do we create a little bit more of Jack's follow through? Because in Jack's swing, the club is getting out in front of him, getting down in front of him, moves into impact, and then on this side of the golf swing, there's this sense that the club's getting thrusted up, and recocked in the wrist simultaneously. Because you've got the club a little behind you, it causes your wrist to sort of do this. There's a little bit of forearm rotation, independent arm movement in your swing, versus let's keep going with the arms up here, but then let's get the arms firing faster down into here and then doing something differently through the hit. Because what happens is if the club's back here, underneath and the forearms start to roll it or square it back up independently then those arms will travel on their own and you'll lose the pressure points in the left and right arm versus getting the arms up fired back in front these pecs are loaded these shoulders are loaded now everything's rotating simultaneously not the arms moving on their own everything's rotating simultaneously through to here so this moves around the corner bang and then from here, the pelvis is thrusting while I'm up cocking my wrist, recocking my wrist, and folding the elbows on the eye line. So that would get the club, instead of being a little behind you, rolling the forearms and getting low on this side, get the club more in front of you, in front of you, everything rotating together through here, and then fold it up like this. So it's actually it's more out in front of you through here because everything's moving the same pace versus arms traveling on their own um, and then <coughs> body catching up sort of late. So um, the feeling would be arms 
arms get up to fire down, it'll feel like you're speeding your arm swing up. And then on the front side of the golf swing, it's going to feel like if there was a wall behind you, this club's not going to be back here and then slamming into the wall. It's going to be more down in front in this way and then working more up cock this way to the finish. Because we can't have Jack's high fade backswing with a rolling throwing uh, arm swing. It's got to it's got to match because if you're going to go Jack Norman uh, Watson model, we've got to match Watson Norman Jack model on both sides of the arc. We can't have Watson's backswing with Trevino's through swing um, because it, it crosses things up too much and it causes the arc to not match. So when you look at high trajectory fade pattern, that release is going to be more this way, more body doing this, more wrists and elbows recocking. So those are high trajectory patterns. Um, and then the low trajectory patterns are going to be more arms extended away. Everything's moving a little bit slower because the club head is, isn't recocking this way. It's extending this way. The body's going to be more straight up and down. Um, it's going to be less sort of crescented out. Um, so all in all, takeaway looks good. I just think that if we got, if we got your arms sped up in the impact and then we're able to work on the pelvis and the recock, you would eliminate some of the drop kicks and I don't think you'd ever miss it left. Not that I think you do, but I think at times there might be a little bit of this going on in your golf swing. So uh, let me know your thoughts on this uh, because you know the Trevino pattern is one thing, the Jack pattern, Norman pattern is another thing. Uh, they're both usable throughout the round. They're both usable on different sides of the bag. Obviously Trevino hit his wedges better than Jack. Um, but Jack drove it better. So um, let me know your thoughts on this. I think uh, all in all, it looks really good. The arms, we could get that kind of cleaned up on the way through. So it's not traveling kind of around through here. It's more in front of you, in front of you, in front of you, in front of you the entire time and clean up the finish a little bit. Uh, so let me know. All right, thanks, bud.